what does a beautiful future look like to you? You can flip a negative mood on its head. This was a talk that was all over the place, but then New York, you are all over the place. There are experiences that you just don't get anywhere else. When you're gone, how do you want to be remembered? Um... Karina, it's time. I want to take you solo. Okay. Come on! How can you be doing this again? Until my husband will be family and he'll have to be okay. They love you. Selena, Selena. Los Dinos is too long to fit. I haven't had the chance to tell them yet that if I do the English record, they can't be on it. Your sister will always need us, no matter how grown up. We have to keep an eye out for her, even when she thinks we don't. No one can do everything alone. Let me help. I'm worried they're gonna split up. We're supposed to lift each other up. We both want what each other wants, right? I don't know why you have to keep adding and adding because and adding. Because what if it stops? You don't have to be alone to be independent. Music is your dream. Dad, I have many dreams. Just embrace who you are and don't be afraid. Who's that? Selena. Hello, baby. When you're gone, how do you want to be remembered? Somebody who wanted to be a role model, the best daughter best sister, the best friend, the best wife. I just want to be remembered as somebody who gave it her all. Hi, I'm Maria Garcia, the creator and host of the podcast, Anything for Selena. And I'll be moderating the 92nd Street Y panel for the drama series, Selena, the series. Selena the series explores Tejano singer Selena's journey from a young girl in Texas with big dreams singing small gigs to becoming the most successful female Latinx artist of all time and the years of sacrifice the Quintanilla family navigated together. Joining us today is EP Jaime Davila, EP and creator Moises Zamora, Actress Christian Serratos, who stars as the queen of Tejano music herself, Selena. Actor Jesse Posey, who portrays guitarist Chris Perez. Ricardo Chavira, who plays Selena's father, Abraham Quintanilla. And director Hiro Gamata. Welcome, everybody. Hey. Thank you. Um, so, Moises, I want to start with you. You know, the story of Selena, it's one of Latino royalty. People consider people consider this family Latino royalty. They hold a space, a very special space in like the public Latino imagination. And people know their story well from the biopic, from documentaries. There's an onslaught of content every year in March and April around the time of Selena's um, birthday and death. So what themes in the Selena Netflix series make this story fresh again for us? Well, I think that um, exploring the theme of family is definitely embedded throughout, right? I mean, you see it in season one and you also see it in season two, but in a different way. Because as Selena becomes her own star, she's gonna find her own identity, her own independence, her own light. Uh, aside from her family, or actually how she balances both, how she gets to keep both, as she creates a family of her own. And, you know, of course, like, family is one of those, you know, 
gigantic sort of values that we have uh, in the Latino American community. And especially, you know, for me, Mexican American, it's from the very ground up, you, it's the most important is who you have. I'm a Mexican immigrant myself. And we, you know, when we came to the States, we had and faced similar struggles like the Quintanillas. I was cleaning houses. We were sleeping in a small room in my abuela's house because we didn't have any other ways to live. So their struggles as a family in coming together with one purpose of music to survive at first, but later to build upon that and actually make the case that the Mexican American dream is the American dream. Um, that to me spoke to me. That to me is why the Quintanillas are royalty and why Selena is so iconic, right? Because she is the paramount of that Mexican American dream. You know, she proves it. Yeah, and one of the things about Selena that resonates so deeply with people is that she was able to transcend in American society to break barriers to ascend while holding on to her roots without compromise. How did you seek to embody that, Christian? Um, by paying attention, I guess. Um, I mean, like, they were saying she represents the American dream and she really, she did, she straddled both those lines, but I think it's such a testament to her strength. She was able to do that, especially when so many people wanted her to be more mainstream, more Anglo. Um, and that wasn't something she was willing to compromise. And I think that is, I mean, so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Another sort of line that she straddled was how tethered she was to her family, um, not just in a, in a, as, as a daughter or a sister, um, but also as an artist, like her artistry was tethered to theirs. Um, and in season two, we see her starting to sort of make her own way. Tell us about the balance of, of playing that, of playing somebody who chooses to be close and attached to her family while also trying to make her own way in the world? Me? Mm -hmm. I think that's, um, that's a struggle we'll see on the show. Um, I'm, you know, she, uh, her family was the most important thing to her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't think, I think it's something that she, she struggled with was how do I, make sure that my family is well and living their dream as well, but not, you know, leave anyone behind. But I think she did it beautifully. I think she balanced it um, beautifully and we'll see it on the show. Yeah. Jesse, I, I want to ask you, um, you know, her love story, Selena's love story to Chris Bettis is one of the most enduring love stories in the American Latino imagination. And Chris is sort of an, an interesting character because he's a love interest that's just dangerous and mysterious enough, you know, but still tender and sensitive. Um, how did you go about studying the character? Um, well, there's YouTube, hours and hours of stuff on YouTube of just uh, interviews from the dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Interviews from the dude. I love that. <laughs> he, wrote a, he wrote a book that was really insightful that kind of really expressed how much he cared for Selena and for his passion of music and the way he lived his life and just, you know, how he saw things. Um, I came across this one interview that was uh, done of him pretty soon after Selena's death. And it was just so raw and uh, you just, you see, you can see how much he cared about her. And you don't really get that in like the, um, in the videos that you see prior to her death. Cause all of it is just a uh, commotion and fast pace and having fun and with the band. And you, you can't really like capture how he feels about anything. But after she dies, it's you just really see the pain in him. And um, so I kind of just took that with me in the filming. And and I don't know, I kind of, the, the dude was like a, a 
kind of like me, you know, he likes music, he's a lover and um, just kind of like a sensitive dude. And so that's, that wasn't too hard to jump into that role for me. It's kind of who I am. Yeah. Hito, you've referred to season one as sort of the, the caterpillar phase where we see Selena um, really coming into her own. What can we expect after the caterpillar phase in season two? Let's release the butterfly. <laughs> I think it's, you know, in Selena, to me, that Selena, everyone uh, remembers, you know, every rose, you know, why it was there, the astronaut, you know. The huge Selena that, that 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 was brought to life in the movie, the Selena we're gonna get. Hmm. And what were the were there challenges in sort of bringing such an openness, such a sort of big personality to the screen once more? It was a huge responsibility, not only uh, recreating you know the reality and the story of such an icon because of the huge expectations that we had and also the, the inevitable comparison with an iconic movie. But also, you know, Selena being a sister, a daughter, a wife, it was, uh, you know, a human responsibility for all of us. And we wanted to treat it, um, to treat her story with all the respect and honor her music, her history, her legacy, her family and, and everyone who loves her in the world. Uh, specifically, uh, specifically uh, at this, in this season, I think it was a very big challenge physically for a uh, Christian. Uh, you'll see, because obviously, as, as, as you know, the story keeps going, and as she started to, in the season one, she's barely trying through the caterpillar first phase to, you know, to get her personality, how she danced, her style, her, you know, her moves, everything. So it was kind of, 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 of very uh, interesting for Christian as an, as an actress because the character arc started like that. You know, she was getting into character. She was learning and studying Selena. And as she grew into the butterfly, I think Christian did. So by the time we reached the Astrodome, if you see, if I show you uh, like the first rehearsals that Christian did when she started uh, the whole project, and I show you a take, one, there's like so many perfect takes and, and our director for that episode, Katina, did such a wonderful job. You can see, you, you tell me like, oh my God, there was a huge, you know, um, like she really grew into a, a really badass performer, if I might say so. Sorry for the cursing, but uh, it's it's amazing what she did. And it was a very demanding uh, uh, episode for her. I remember we sent her a lot of uh, pepperoni bits after we wrapped her because she, <laughs> she barely could move the, the next day. We were all so proud. And you had a crew, you know, all the crew was just like staring in awe. I, uh, I placed a huge screen next to Katina's monitors so we could watch uh, the playback of the actual video of the Astrodome compared to what, what Christian was doing. And everybody got goosebumps. Like you could turn around and the doctor, like our, our health supervisor was in tears because she was <laughs> so excited <laughs> of, 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 you know, everybody was so amazed of what, what Christian was doing. So I really cannot wait for you to see that it actually happened. Not only we're telling uh, Selena's story as it happened, but also we're, we're going to watch a star, uh, a star, being born with Christian. Yeah, you know, well, um, in season one, Christian, you really embodied um, a Selena that is less well-known, right? A sort of a younger Selena that's coming into herself, 80 Selena, um, who doesn't get the attention, I think, that she merits. 80 Selena was also ahead of her time. Um, but in season two, now you are going to portray the Selena that people have imprinted in their minds for the last quarter century, the purple jumpsuit Selena, the Selena that people know and love so well. And that Selena has become a shorthand for an American experience. You know, she has become... Um, 
perhaps the most ubiquitous figure in US Latino modern history. How did you carry the pressure from that in, in from season one to season two? Yeah, there was a lot of pressure. I just tried to manage it the best I could, but I mean, it came out and I've always been very honest about what I'm feeling when I'm feeling it. For me, it's a sense of like, I guess, purging it from my body. So, you know, I was constantly telling the cast when I was nervous or leaning on them and they were just always so warm and so helpful. And Hito was such an amazing partner because she would tell me when I was being appropriately hard on myself. And then when I was also just um, terrorizing myself for no reason, um, which I could really, you know, ap appreciate. But it was interesting playing Selena in the 80s for the first season because there was a part of me that went, well, that's going to be a bit easier because people don't know her so well and maybe they'll go lighter on me. Um, but because she's so ingrained in our upbringing, we feel like the legend that we know existed throughout her entire life. I mean, I feel like a lot of people thought she had the long black hair and the braid and the bangs and, and moved the way that she did later in her life, earlier in her life. When, when that's not the case at all, that was really an evolution and she had to figure that out. So um, I was really excited that people got to see that um, 80s young Selena who was trying to figure out who she wanted to be on stage and in life she she was you know so interested in hip-hop and she didn't really like bring in the influence of like the flamenco movements until later on um, but I feel like the first season was a good it's a it's been a good buffer I'm now um, I think ready to see what people think about our second season I think after um, hearing what I did about our first season I think they're going to be really pleasantly surprised about our second because it is the icon and and it is it's um it's a little stressful because people know that version of her so well but also seems kind of easier because i've known that version of her for so long so in a way i feel like i've been prepping for that season since i was a kid like i know that version of her so well so i i i think it's going to be beautiful and i think people are going to be really happy was there a specific piece of footage um, that you used to prepare for the role or a, fa a favorite performance or video clip that you kept coming back to? Both, was there one for season one and was there, is there one for season two that sort of like big, this cornerstone clip that you come back to this footage? Um, no, I don't, th I don't think so. Um, there, there was a, a clip of Selena that I kept coming back to in my own personal life. and. Every time I was talking about Selena, I or wanted to show somebody my favorite video of Selena. I always pulled up like any performance of Que Creías. I just thought that for me was the Selena that I know. Like for me, Selena is strength and power and confidence and cheekiness. And she's so playful in that video, but so strong. And um and I, and I love that those performances so much. So when we got to um, perform it on the show, I was, I was very, very nervous, but very, very happy. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was like, just let me do it. I've been waiting for this moment for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a dream clip. I think it's like, a, it's a favorite of so many people for sure, where she like literally grabs a stranger from the audience and like doms him in front of everybody, you know? <laughs> so much fun with that like he was such a trooper and I thought his performance in that um song was so important because people have that ingrained in their minds I thought he did such a good job he I mean somebody could have just as well have stood there but he was so unrelatable um, when he was on stage I thought he was so cute yeah yeah um so tell us for season two Ricardo um, what do you want fans to know about the evolution of Abraham Quintanilla? Wow. Um, you know, it's, well, Abraham is the, he is the patriarch of the family. So that's when you talk about him, you're talking about this entire group of people, you know, the collective Quintanillas. Mm -hmm. um, if, for me, it's, it's, it's seeing somebody who's, who built, empire, you know, but also building in his daughter and his children, that was really his dream. Uh, and so there's, there's a bitter sweetness that's there throughout, I think, 
the entirety of our of our uh, of our production. When you see the movement from season one to season two, um, you see him having to, whether it's through his own self resignation or somewhat forcibly by the eloping of the two uh, of of Chris and uh, Selena. He has to give up some of his power. He has to give up some of his control, which is a difficult thing for this individual. Uh, And so you have, you get to see that struggle. Also in that struggle, what you see is somebody who becomes distracted. And in light of his distraction, that's when somebody like a Yolanda can come in and kind of ingratiate herself into the family. And he has allowed his, secure system to kind of be let down a little bit. And so then what that, what happens is the spiral that, that is the ultimate downfall of, uh, of his daughter and therefore his empire. I'm so curious. Um, have you heard from Mr. Quintanilla? Has he expressed to you how he feels about your portrayal of him? No, no at all. I've, I've never had any contact with him at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I um, and when I found out that I had the role, I, I'm kind of glad that I have it. Uh, you know, like I, I didn't want to. Uh, I've never seen the movie, uh, still even to this day. So I, I couldn't tell you what Edward James almost did with the role. Uh, and once I got the role, I purposely made sure not to watch the movie. And I'm glad that I haven't had any contact with Mr. Quintanilla while while we were taping because uh, I didn't want that to influence my decision making as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I find that so fascinating because um, as somebody who like spent some time with him, like the cadence of your speech and the mannerisms with which you played him um, are, uh, are actually really resonant of the way he is in real life. So it's actually fascinating for me to hear that you haven't spent like time with him. Again, you know, uh, so I did my research, I, uh, just like Jesse, YouTube, YouTube is a great resource, um, you know, but also, like I said, my, my father is of that same generation. And, you know, if you're from South Texas, and I'm, I mean, I'm from South Texas, all my dad's family is from San Antonio, all the way south, Eagle Pass, Piedras Negras, Del Rio, Acuna, I mean, everywhere. Okay, and this is the this is the area that I grew up in my whole life. When you listen to Mr. Quintanilla talk, it's very representative of the way many men of that generation that are Mexicano de South Texas talk. I mean, you can hear it. You can hear the cadences. You can hear all of that. I I was raised around that my whole life. So for me, it was an absolute pleasure to be able to like, wow, I get to kind of embody this person that, that is kind of similar to my father and all of my theos, but is this iconic piece of South Texas lore, you know? So for me, it was, it was very, very special. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of like the testament of what happens when, um, when you have actors in a series who can draw from personal experience to play a role so authentically. Jesse, was there something about Chris Bettis that surprised you? Um, once you started portraying him? Um, Surprised me? Not so much. Uh, uh, Well, okay. Um, One one big thing that um, I wasn't aware of until we started filming was the impact that, that Abraham had on Chris and that how much Chris respected Abraham, even though that they you know, didn't always see eye to eye and Chris may not have liked him. Abraham might not have liked him. Uh, uh, Chris really, really, really respected the way that Abraham uh, brought up his family and the way he kind of just built, like uh, Ricardo said, this empire. And um, that's not something that I went into it with. I just thought this dude loved this chick and he knew he loved music. And, um, and he hated this girl's dad. <laughs> and, but then I had to, I, I've quickly learned that uh, 
even though that there was just like a rift between them, he wanted to create this family with Selena kind of based on the way uh, Abraham created his family. And, um, uh, but other than that, not really, no, everything was pretty straightforward, but that was one thing that I, that I just, I love that. I love that even though this whole journey of Chris and Selena was really rocky and tough and Abraham kind of made it that way, uh, Chris still, had it in him to really respect what he did for his family. Yeah. Um, Jaime, you know, the, the series um, hit number one in, in multiple countries. Um, it was received um, with open arms by a lot of people. Um, you know, we've mentioned how there were television critics who wrote that Selena's character in the Netflix series seemed to exist um, in service of the men around her. Um, I wonder what went through your mind when, when you read that criticism. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, also, I'm a very positive person and I tend to look at the positive things in life. So um, I, I did not go into this, you know, thinking, everyone's going to love Selena, right? It's like, this is an iconic story with an iconic uh, thing. So, you know, some people are going to come into it with uh, different perspectives. So I didn't come into this thinking like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, we're going to, uh, so I think I went into it really just wanting to celebrate a Mexican American family. I went into it wanting to um, work with people who work their hardest and would do the research and would put in 110% every single day. Um, you know, I went into it with this amazing attitude of this blessing that we got to tell this Mexican American story. And for me, the results I see were amazing, right? Like I, my entire family in South Texas would texted me and called me, which is rare. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're just like, thank you. I, we, we've never seen ourselves on screen. We've never seen ourselves represented this way. You know, so I, and like Ricardo, I grew up in South Texas. You know, I grew up there with the cadence, understanding these people who, you know, see their identity as a superpower, right? Like, I think something that's so beautiful about being Mexican American is that you can be both and, you know, I think sometimes people talk about our identity as an either or. And I think what our, what Selena was and what I think our show celebrates is, is that both is amazing. Being both Mexican and American is such an incredible, incredible gift. And you look at the, and I think what we explore with the show is look at the music that we get to create as a result, right? And so when we're talking about Selena's music, we're talking about someone who Beyonce counts as a huge inspiration, Katy Perry, Cardi B, The Weeknd. So honestly, I, I came into this with such amazing positivity that we were blessed to tell this story. And I'm really excited that we got so much success. And look, there are critics for sure, but I think that the critics are gonna love part two um, because as Christian so eloquently said, that's maybe, you know, the Selena that everyone knows. Um, but I think it's so important that, you know, how do you get to be that butterfly? You got to be a caterpillar first. And I think that the writers, the direction, the actors did such an amazing job on part one. And I'm, I'm just so glad about the amazing success we had on part one. And I'm excited to make part two even bigger, uh, where people get to see the making of Bidi Bidi Bum Bum, uh, you know, the Astrodome performance. Um, there's just so much amazingness to look forward to in part two. That's what I'm excited about. Um, Hito, I want to ask you a question about sort of recreating this world um, that Selena grew up in. As somebody, I'm I'm not from South Texas, but I grew up in I grew up in West Texas on the U.S. Mexico border, and you know there are overlapping things about like West Texas culture and South Texas culture, and one of the things that I enjoyed most about the show is like the sense of place. Like I watched it and I could get a sense of the place in the world that this was, that this was happening in. And it went from, you know, the adornos on the wall, you know, like the, the um, decorations, the decor in like the sets. Um, there was an authenticity to it that, that struck me. Um, tell me about, 
creating that world and the detail that went into that and sort of what your guiding principle was um, as, as you thought about giving the series a, a sense of place? Um, first of all, as, as you know, Jaime being from South Texas, Ricardo being from South Texas, I, I really didn't want to betray the, or, or audience from Texas. And I felt uh, a, a big responsibility there as well. So uh, we traveled down there trying to soar the whole universe where she grew up in. I, I, my, my father is, is a director of photography, so I was raised uh, in, 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 you know, with the premise that I have, as a director, I have the responsibility of writing with the camera as well. And it's also uh, very, very important that the universe that we are creating is believable and realistic. Otherwise, it just places you out of fiction. So uh, I tried, uh, I, we even studied the light, how the light hit on Selena Street so we could be as accurate as possible. And uh, uh, we were blessed and I think Selena's spirit was guiding us because many of the places uh, in Tijuana and in Rosarito, the architecture is like stuck in time. So it, it kind of resembled a bit the, the, the South Texas in the 80s somehow. And, you know, uh, Ricardo played a huge part of it in, in and in, in, in he was like my assessor, you know, everything. I was like, Ricardo, will you believe this, this is part of, of you know, uh, of San Antonio? Do you think this? And he, you know, he was very helpful in that sense. I even spent a weekend with his beautiful, lovely family and, and met his father, who is one of the nicest people I have ever met, brilliant judge and juez. And they took me in, you know, they had like, like a Japanese Mexican adopted a daughter uh, for for over a weekend and they drove me around. They showed me, you know, uh, what San Antonio smelled, looked like, felt like, you know, we, he, uh, we, he took me to a concert uh, of, of, of Flaco Martinez playing the accordion and we had a beer and I had the honor of meeting him. So, so I really, I tried my very, very best to, to, yeah, to, to transmit to, to our creative team, you know, a wonderful production designer or DP, uh, Chuy Chavez, uh, Carlos Benassini, or brilliant custom designer Adela Cortaz uh, to transmit what, what I kind of absorb and, and try to, you know, read it with the uh, homosex so we tell real. Yeah, I just want to add there that, like, the detail was crazy. So, you know, you're... If you're ever lucky to go to Corpus Christi, you can go see, you know, Selena, the Quintanilla houses, right? Because there's three houses that are right next to each other. Uh, and I remember going to set and all of a sudden walking on set and seeing those three houses, literally to the detail where I looked down and I saw the sewer grate and the sewer grate said city of Corpus Christi on it. Like th there was a level of detail that uh, Hiro and the entire crew really worked so hard to get. And it was again, walking into that set and walking into those locations, you know, was awesome. And so it's really a testament to the amazing production crew and Hiro and everyone who, again, like the actors, just really, really worked hard to try to get as many details as they could, right? You know, one of um, the things that I imagine must have been a challenge is that you're trying to capture both the, the humanity of Selena as a girl and as a daughter and as a sister, um, but also sort of the making of an icon and um, of somebody who has become something bigger than herself. Like we were saying, you know, uh, one of the most potent symbols of American Latino history. Um, while at the same time, uh, you know, building trust with the Quintanilla family who worked with you all on, on the program Tell me how you approached that relationship. Um, was there was there ever sort of a, a push and pull, and how did you how did you approach that? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think, as uh, Ricardo said, I think when you grow up in South Texas, the Cantinias are royalty. Everyone has a story about them, and so I went into them meeting them very nervous because uh, you're yeah you're meeting. American royalty, right? Not forget South Texas royalty, right? Because yeah, when we're talking about, <laughs> yeah, when we're talking about Selena, she's an American icon, right? So you're meeting American icons, and you think you know them, right? And so I think what was so amazing about working with them was, I all of a sudden I was talking to my deals, and I was talking to my primas, and I was like, you know, it was so familial, right? It really did feel like I was talking to my own family, um, and so that made it really fun. 
And yeah, of course. I mean, I think what was so great about the Quintanillas is that they had a lot of great insights, right? And sort of really wanted to make sure that we were telling their family story and wanting to make sure that we could get um, certain scenes in there and really set the record straight on a lot of things. Um, because, you know, I think a lot, you know, you were referencing a lot of stuff that exists about uh, Selena and her story. I don't think anything like our show exists about Selena's story. I don't think anything really portrays the entire family story like we portrayed, right? Which is they literally were on a bus or in a van together, nonstop working all the time, right? Like that is in, so inspiring, right? If you want to, if you want to make your dream happen, you can work at it. And so I think it was just you know, working with them to make sure that we were getting that story correct, right? Because these are real people. You know, um, I come into this with experience working in unscripted television. And so, you know, you understand that these are real stories, right? And there's a balance there. Um, but it was so, it was such an honor when they watched, you know, working with them and every, at the end of the season, when they're watching season one and they're just so happy, you know, as, 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 um, he just talked about AB was so, so excited that, you know, his story was being told. Suzette's story was being told. I think a fuller story of the family was being told. Um, and so, yeah, behind the scenes working with the family was really great. And um, I, I'm honored that they entrusted all of us, you know, the cast and the person to tell their story. And we all worked super hard uh, to get it right. And I think we did a really good job. So but I don't want to say that. I don't want to speak for them. Yeah. <laughs> this is a question for all of you as we're wrapping up. Um, if you all could choose one song of Selena's catalog to represent season two, what would it be? You know. <laughs> no me queda más. Yeah. Good one. That's wow, one. that's an unexpected, I did not expect that one. I don't know. I thought it was going to be like one of the bops, one of the bitty bitty bomb bombs. Right? I was going to say the bop. I was going to say bitty bitty bomb bomb. But again, <laughs> like I, I, this is a collective, this is, this is a collective decision. And I think he all <laughs> has set the, set the, the card right with, uh, I will say this, like when you see Christian's uh, performance of um, No Mecca the Mass and that episode I, you will understand why Hiro said it so quickly. Um, it is powerful. Well, thank you so, so much um, for joining us today for this virtual panel for the 92nd Street Y. It was an honor. Um, Selena, the series season two premieres May 4th on Netflix.